Welcome folks. Bill Wilson here from Wilson Combat, Lee Eye Defense, and got my good friend Ken Hackathorn and, and Paul Howe here with me today. What we're going to do today, we're going to test a new Lehigh 9mm self-defense bullet. This is a 115 grain control fracture bullet. We're going to be shooting it out of a Wilson Combat SFX9 4 inch barrel at 7 yards into a calibrated 6x6x20 by by gel block. Shooting it today at a velocity of about 1100 feet per second, which is kind of a standard velocity load. This is what the basic round looks like here. The OJI is pretty pointed. So it gets, has good feeding. We have had zero feeding issues testing this in all kinds of guns. And what the bullet's designed to do is about an inch and a half, two inches in of impact here. There's three pedals on this bullet that's gonna shed off and radiate out. And then the base, which is, has extremely sharp machined front edge on it, is gonna penetrate in deeper. So we're gonna see exactly how that works out and uh, see what we get. I'm going to kind of go over what, what the bullet did. This bullet is designed to come apart shortly after impact. And what we have here, we have about an inch and a half of penetration in the block. Then the bullet separates. Three pedals go out. The least penetration is six inches. The most penetration is about seven. And then the flat wood cutter base continued on for uh, 17 inches. So let's pull it out and see what, and kind of see what these things look like and see what the guys think about it. Okay, there's one of the pedals. The base normally weighs about 82 grains, retain weight. Okay, so what we've got here, guys, we've got a sharp, feel the edge of that. We've got a sharp edge, full wood cutter base, about 82 grains that went 17 inches. And then we got a pedal that's typically somewhere in the give or take 12 grain weight. So what do you think, Ken, for a self-defense load? Well, when you watch the video, the slow motion video, that temporary cavity is really impressive. But what we know, what really matters is the permanent wound channel. And what I like is when you look at what the permanent wound channel looks like as a result of the pedals, it's actually a lot more extensive than I expected. So if you look at the same thing you would get with a traditional hollow point, you quite often you get a big temporary cavity as far as that boom effect but then once it actually goes back to the real permanent one it's not that big this is dramatically more effective plus you know you can say well that's not very much weight but man it is sharp on almost every surface so obviously from a laceration standpoint blood loss that's that's pretty cool can bill i think it's outstanding you've got the uh, best of both worlds you've got uh a great expansion cavity here, plus a through and through. So say you, you only get lucky and you hit them in the arm. You, you're gonna tear that arm, it, it's not gonna work anymore. And then the bullet going through, say you hit a chest cavity, it can still travel through, hit the spine, and we know what spine shots do, it, it, uh, it mobility kill. So you're getting the best of both worlds in, the, in this uh, bullet, and these, these pedals are sharp, they're cutters, and that, that's what you're looking for to, to destroy tissue. And let's face it, blood loss, whether you're hunting, you know, two-legged critters or four-legged critters, it basically blood loss and loss of blood pressure is what we're looking for as far as causing in rapid incapacitation. So as nine millimeter bullets go, I'll be honest with you, Bill, I started off being fairly skeptical about <laughs> this concept. But what I'm seeing here, I'm, I'm interested now. All right, well, we're gonna, we're gonna try some more with uh, shooting with uh, some denim and we know that can be real problems for some hollow point designs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm curious to see how this does with some, uh, should we say, garment cover. And so now we're gonna do a worst case scenario for heavy clothing. We've got four layers of fresh denim here. What often happens with a hollow point bullet is when it goes through a barrier, especially heavy clothing, the hollow point can clog up and uh, the bullet can just basically act, act like a full metal jacket and not expand at all. So we'll see what this new bullet does. All right, we just finished shooting the new nine millimeter 115 control fracture, but we had four layers of, of fresh denim that we had to penetrate first. 
what we've got here compared to the bare gel is we actually got more dispersion of the petals. We got one petal all the way to the bottom of the, of the table down here at the back. We've got one about to penetrate out right here. And the third one actually penetrated out, fully penetrated the gel and went out. And then we've got the same basic depth of penetration on the base. I think it performed extremely well. What do you guys think? Well, I, first off, I think we had to point out you're using actual 10% ordinate gelatin. Yeah. You know, a lot of people use the clear gel because it's more photogenic. Unfortunately, it doesn't represent tissue very well. So we're getting a better representation of, of you know, the bullet performance you want in tissue. I find it interesting that with the, with the denim, not only did it peel off the petals earlier, actually they penetrated farther than it did in the bare gel. And so that, that's a bit of a surprise to me. And you say, well, this one came out, but if you think of in terms of a torso shot, it's still gonna be in the body cavity and it's still gonna be doing the laceration. If you look at the permanent wound channel from these, as you can see, we're still getting the cutting effect, which is what you want. And yeah, we just got a wider dispersion yep. than we had, than we had yeah, when it so was just bare Actually, the, the denim enhanced that the performance. Effect. Yeah. Yeah. I like the consistency. You're getting the instant dump, uh, a lot of energy transferred. The main core is, is pushing through, it's cutting, but it's not pitching or yawing. It's just, it's staying on trajectory, which is consistent and that's huge. So now you have an, a, an ammo of still the best of both worlds. And uh, uh, be interested to see, you know, how it continues because right now everything's consistent. And that, that's what I look for in a, in a pistol bullet. You know? And the thing that we've talked about before, so often when you do this with traditional bullets, you often see them that they end up base first. They actually do a yaw yeah. and reverse. Yeah. And this thing is still base, you know, base as it came out of the barrel. And that sharp cutting edge. And I noticed the way that bullet's made, the way it's machined, you basically are cutting, in essence, a sharp edge on the yeah. wad cutter effect. Yeah. So you've got that uh, effect. So your permanent wound channel, from a laceration standpoint, of, it's not pushing aside things like nerves and veins and arteries. It's actually going to clip them. Yeah, and, and again, we got good penetration. That's uh, about 15, 15, 15 and a half. 15 and a half. 15 let's and see half what inches. That bullet yeah, let's, pull, like. let's pull the stuff out and see what we got. Now, it's staying center mass of the block when you look at the end. So it's, it's uh, flying true inside the, the, the medium. Bill, check yeah, that there we out. Go. I'll get yeah. one of the pedals here. A little bit of denim stuck to the front of it there. but it's still got that sharp cutting edge, you know, that was initially machined in it. Yeah, and it's interesting, you got some denim in there, but it doesn't affect the performance whatsoever. Yeah, no, it's uh, consistent. And that edge is pretty sharp. Yeah. yeah, as long as it doesn't hit anything like, you know, metal or rock or something like that, the edge is gonna stay sharp. Well, after we shot the denim, uh, we're talking a little bit here, and you know, Pauls does a lot of law enforcement training, and he brought up the question, well, I wonder if it uh, will penetrate body armor. That, you know, that could not be such a good thing for law enforcement. So we said, well, heck, let's find out. So we went and, and grabbed out of our stash of stuff, Silent Partner 3A body armor, and shot around in it at seven yards. The base was still sticking out of the front of the vest, and the nose actually imploded rather than expanding out to come apart. So the bullet did what it was designed to do because it takes entry into fluid to make this bullet come apart. Hard objects doesn't make a control fracture bullet come apart or any of our control chaos rifle bullets come apart. It takes fluid. So, you know, we're pretty much dead center on the deal. And you can see there, uh, we got no, no entry whatsoever into the block, you know, the the vest stopped it completely. Uh, looking at this from the perspective of a law enforcement op officer, I think it's pretty good news, don't you, Paul? I think it's outstanding. And uh, so it's one of those things that uh, you, you gotta know both sides of your, your bullet, your ammo, what it'll do and what it won't do. But I think that's huge, so bad people won't use it for ugly purposes, we'll say. It, you've got to be able to back up the fact that it, you don't want a bullet that's going to limit its market because let's face it, if it did do the job, then it's going to limit your ability to sell it to the private sector. So 
yeah, the bullet is, we'll say, is nobody wants to get shot with body armor. It's never pleasant, but we know that the bullet's not going to go through, and that's uh, that's our goal. Yeah. It, it's outstanding. I'm the one golf club kind of guy that I want one bullet to do hunting, uh, self-defense, uh, and this is it. So it does everything I need it to do, whether it be an animal or a human, and uh, it's simple and uh, effective and it's consistent, and that's what I like. Well, I'm like most people. When you first bought this bullet business, Bill, the, I was a little skeptical. I'm traditionalist in many ways, so I was like, is this stuff really going to do what it's supposed to do? And Well, the company's always made some pretty big claims. Yeah. You know, and some people have been skeptical of some of those claims. And now but that, you know, what, looking at this today, i like, you know, I think I need some of these for my own use. Bottom line is, not really what I expected. I think the concept of this controlled expansion or controlled chaos design bullet, it, it quite honestly surprised me, exceeded what I expected. Well, folks, thanks for watching. Um, hope you learned something from the video on the performance of this new uh, Lehigh bullet that we're uh, pretty excited about. We spent a lot of, lot of effort testing. We're going to do another video uh, in the future here on exactly how our protocol is for testing. Uh, but just to give you like kind of a little bit of an idea of what this bullet went through, you know, when we first uh, got the first samples done, you know, we checked accuracy on them, passed that test. I've got a water tank down at the ranch in Texas where uh, it's 16 by 16, uh, 48 inches deep that has a, a closed cell foam bladder at the front of it that I can shoot through multiple times. Uh, we shot through that. That front bladder occasionally will make a bullet do something different than than most of the bullets that go through there and so we don't consider that you know kind of a final water test so then we then we shoot the bullet in in just uh, six mil bags of water so there's no there's nothing that's going to affect the bullet you know going into the water and then if then after it does good on that you know it gets gel tested and the ultimate final test i go out and shoot a hog and then we put the hog cadaver up and we shoot the bullets into a hog and see what they do Thank you, folks. Uh, appreciate you uh, tuning into the channel. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, hope you will subscribe. And uh, we'll catch you guys later.